What's up YouTube? I have a treat for you tonight and this one might take us a little more than one painting session to complete. So I'm just going to go ahead and dive in. This one is going to be extremely ambitious but a lot of fun and is one of my personal all-time favorite D&D monsters. We are looking at a dragon turtle. So this is going to be a lot of fun. Um, so, since it'll be a while before y'all will get a chance to see him assembled, I just have him tacked in place with blue tack right now so that I can prime him. But we're going to be doing all of the painting piece by piece. So he's going about to get completely separated. So let me shift this around so that y'all can see everything. So that is the gorgeous beast right there. And then inside here we have his base. And we have a slew of paints that I'm intending to use for this. And this is just for the turtle himself. Nah, not even close to messing with the base. Like some of them may get used on the base, but that's all. Okay, YouTube, I'm back. So before we dive into the actual painting itself, I want to go through some stuff here. So here are some pictures of some sea turtles. And as you see the patterning on their shell, that's something I want to try to replicate with this many. Have these nice vibrant striping effects in the shell. So we're going to see what we can do about that. Um, secondly, the next thing I wish to address that I didn't mention at first, which I will grab the shell piece to show you. See how, like before, where my priming was either all black or all white, and I have a very gray gradient here. This is what's called pre-shading, and with something like this, it is one of the most amazing things to do. Lastly, well, before I go into that, let me address that a little bit further. The whole point of doing the pre-shading is it helps to let you see where your biggest, brightest highlights are. And if you work with glazes and whatnot, you can really pick them out a bit better. Um, the glazes will actually take to those areas and have a different color there than they will in the areas that are pure black. And you'll get a nice gradient effect. Lastly, you see I've got some areas that didn't get primed at all that aren't in the glue areas. Um, this is fine because I have right here some brush on black primer. So we're going to use that as needed to fill in any gaps. Okay. So still trying to decide what piece we're going to tackle first. I just wanted to go ahead and show off that little bit of info. Um, but kind of like what I'm thinking for a paint scheme. The other thing you saw with those turtles is that with the skin, they have like a very bright color underneath and then the raised edges were darker something you don't really see a lot in miniature painting that I'm going to try to emulate um, and I'm going to be going with the greens there and with the shell for this design and I'm seeing like some nice molded detail that should help with this I'm going to go for some blues and try to give this a very fantasy look to it Unlike most of the models that I've seen, which really scream, I am just a big snapping turtle, or um, they go fantasy, but to me just don't push the fantasy enough. So it still looks very realistic, and like I really want this to scream that it's a dragon. Have those turtle elements take that um, actual inspiration from, na from nature, and let you see where this whole thing started, but really build off that and bring 
a lot of whimsical fantasy to it. Now I'm still thinking kind of the purples with the mouth just because this is another one where those purple colors look like they'll really add a lot. I don't know what I'm doing with the eyes yet. Um, the nails and the under score is going to be going with more of our yellowed bones and our under plating on the neck here. Um, I believe it's just the neck and a bit of the tail that has some underplating. Nope, just the neck. So just the neck here with the underplating and probably the bottom of the mouth will be going with kind of the cream colors, kind of like what we did with the red dragon to really accent that and bring that out. And then I've got some stone grays and misty and rainy grays as well as some linen white, ghost white, and snow shadow to kind of pick out the details where needed um, in white, especially with like say the barnacles on the back. So, um, actually you know what? back I think is going to have the most work involved with it since we're gonna have to do a lot of build up with these blues to get those kind of effects that I want so I think we're gonna start there and I think we'll end with our um, chest plate because I think that's gonna take the least amount of work so yeah, nice, beautiful back. This is going to be a lot of fun. And we'll come back to kind of these skin-like areas underneath. I want to focus right now really on the shell itself. Okay. Be back as soon as I'm set up, YouTube. Okay, YouTube. So I'm back. So the first thing I want to do is, how I said, filling in spots for the priming so I said I got just a paint basic paint on primer and this will just make sure that everywhere is primed the whole benefit to the priming is that helps your paints stick to the miniature so even though a lot of these areas are like going to be not accessible and really not seen in some cases when the miniature is completely painted you'll have there like there will be angles that you can hold it where eventually it will be seen so my whole desire with this is to make it so that no matter where you shift this you are going to see a painted figure and you are going to see detail and in order to achieve that I need to make sure I've got it nice and primed so that everything will stick And now this primer here does not have to be like a perfect coating. It's more about the abrasiveness that it's going to leave behind for the paint to stick to. So like right there, I'm not worried about getting that perfectly black. I see it's been primed. That gives me something to work off of. That's going to be a nice shaded color anyways. So, Okay, that is all of the areas that need priming. So now we can start working on our 
actual miniature surfaces. And I'll kind of have to go back and do this for other areas of the miniature as well. But for right now, we're just going to focus on the shell. So, I have this violet shadow here. I know it's a purple color. A little more on the blue side. But this should be a nice, good base color to set down and build off of for my blues. And I'm going for a Brioni blue as like my really base. And I've got some highlights with Templar blue ashen blue and heather blue to build that up as much as I want but for the actual detail work I'm going with this deep ocean marine teal and surf aqua and those should give me that cool effect on the miniature itself I'm wanting this to go on kind of like a glaze, but for what I'm doing, I don't really want to use the wet palette. So we're going to use our water dropper to add in some water. And this is why I keep two, one that's going to be clean, one that's going to be dirty. You don't have to use just water. Some people like getting actual flow improver that's designed for the paints. I have used that from time to time. Um, I've done very little work with my airbrush, but like when I'm working with the airbrush, I find the flow improver to be better. But we're just going to paint this on. This is going to take quite a few layers because as you see it's very thin and adding a nice purple but that's really what I wanted for this because I want to still keep behind all of this pre-shading detail that I did here. So I can kind of build up from that. So if I didn't thin it to get this glazing consistency, I would lose all of this work that I did with the pre-shading. Let's get some areas that's in the black so y'all can kind of see the difference. So if you look in the white areas here, it gives it a nice vibrant purple, while here in the black it is a very, very deep purple. And like I said, I want to build up from this with the blues, but having this purple underneath will really make all of these blues really pop and come out and show a lot of detail. So this is going to take me a good long while. And I am not going to be able to talk my way through <laughs> all of painting this. Nor do I think y'all want me to be uploading an 8 hour long video. So we are going to go ahead and pause it here. And I will paint this up. And I will be back when this is completely painted. What's up YouTube? We're back. So it took me about 3 layers to really get it nice and a good base coat and as you can see it's got 
very very purplish blue color to it so it's a great place to start <clears throat> but now I'm moving on to this Brion blue and I'm trying to bring all this color up and once again I'm going to do this as a glaze to try and keep all of that work that I've done so far present. And just because I want this to be a bit more, like I want this glaze to be very close to the consistency of a wash, I'm personally a little more comfortable with just doing the adding it in like this than working with the wet palette. But as we continue on, I'll probably end up shifting to the wet palette for more stuff. Now one thing that you should be able to see is more of those details getting picked out. I'll try to zoom in so you can see it a bit better. Oh, I need to stay under the light, so let's shift the camera. There we go. Now y'all can see. So see those lines and striations in the piece? That is that detail that I was talking about that we'll really be able to pick out. And when we go do that, we're going to use our ocean blues. And that's going to help create that detail effect that I wanted to create. So let me zoom out some so you can really see this as I paint. So it's going to take a few layers to really get this. But now that I'm working with some brighter colors, it's going to really start to color in the black since I was done with such a deep dark color for my base to build off of the black wasn't really changing too much in those areas and on the other underside and in these very dark areas here. I'm probably going to do something with the purple to try to keep them really dark and give this a nice cool effect with that. So but right now I'm a little more interested in working with this detail on top. And once again, this is going to take a lot of players to really get the effects that I'm wanting. So, I'll be at this a good while. And like I said, when I post this video, this is just going to be a part one. I don't even think I'll be able to do this many all in one night. Like tonight, I might only be working on the shell.
These barnacles are going to be a lot of fun when I go to get to them. Let's shift this a little more towards me. There we go. I can see that a bit better. Especially considering the majority of the barnacles are on the dark side of this paint job, so when I get to them, they will bring a nice bright element to that side of the mini. Now one of the benefits of having these like glazes like this, this paint is so thin that it will dry a lot quicker than usual and leave behind a very very thin layer so that you can kind of see what's underneath. And It's great for blending. It's great for popping effects like this. Like with me wanting that purple under the blue. It's going to let that purple really shine through and build up. more layers that you do of a color, the more towards that color your result is going to shift. Definitely got a thicker coat with that one. That's fine. I'm going to work it all in there anyways. I'm trying to bring it up to that color. As you can see, I'm just trying to work on the top part of the shell with this. I really want to leave these little back ends of these uh, branches. I want to paint them up to have more of the purple colors. So I don't really want to work the blues off that. Like I'm going to end up shifting into my other purples later. But right now, I'm just wanting to focus on one my blue areas. So let's shift like this. Since we're out of it, let's can get back to working more of the top side here. So, 
you kind of see what I'm doing here and how this is starting to look. So I'll be back when I'm going to my layers of this YouTube and let you see the next step. What's up YouTube? I'm back. So we're going to start dry brushing to try to start getting that effect. As you can see we got our nice blue all over. Try to give us a light a bit better. Nothing seems to be working right here. Uh, but we're going to take and we're going to dry brush our deep ocean onto this to start creating that effect that we were looking for. This will start adding some greens to this blue. So literally we're just going in here and doing our dry brush like you've seen me do plenty of times before. This is just going to liven it up, bring these green tints. And we're going to build our way up with the marine teal and the surf aqua. And my hope is when we're done. It's not hitting that enough. Okay, I need to go back to the drawing board. Dry brushing is not going to give me the result that I want. So I'll paint some more of our brown green over this. Not brown green, brown blue. Bring it back down. Now I'll rethink this and how I want to do it. So that is not patterning at all the way I want it to. But I do want to use these colors to get an effect. So if I can't do dry brush. I'm going to have to go for something a lot more difficult. I'm going to use this brush for this. I'm going to have to freehand paint this up here. which I'm not terribly good at and is also extremely time consuming so this is going to be fun and difficult
So as you can see, I'm just very carefully choosing where to apply paint. And just building it up to add this additional layer of color. And that'll let us get that design that we wanted. So this is going to take me a extremely long time to do. So I will be back when I'm actually done doing this and hopefully it adds a good amount of detail. What's up YouTube? We're back. So you can see I etched out by hand all of the edges. We're now switching up to a marine teal and we're going to continue to do this and leave behind as much as we can of the previous layer. So I'm going to start by just hitting the edges here. And right now what I'm doing is I'm using the side of the brush so I'm just hitting that hard edge. And for this layer I'm going to end up having to go in by hand and add a little more detail on the sides. When I get to the final detail, just hitting these edges will be all I do. So, I got those edges, so now I'm going to go in and I'm going to detail very carefully by hand along this edge. And that's kind of how I'm going to do it. And this is going to really pop these edges out. And then, so I'm going to go ahead and do that and go ahead and do the hard edges with the Surf Aqua. And once I've done all that, I'll come back and let y'all see the next step. Okay, YouTube, I'm back. So now that I've gotten these edges really like this, now I need to blend all of those hard lines in. So we're going back to our deep ocean and we are going to create a glaze with the deep ocean. And we're going to glaze all of that in to the 
this area. And do make sure your paint is completely dry in an area before you start to glaze it. I did just mess up there, so I'll have to come back to that area. But, so we'll start. You know what, this should be the area that I painted. First. I'm just going to go in. I'm going to glaze around. The area where I did the line painting. And try to blend this in to the blue. And it may take multiple layers to blend this in. But the goal is for the end result to kind of just shift in to the color and not look like the hard lines. as many glazes as we need to to tone this and then if we hit an area too much we can go back with glazes of the original uh, brown blue to tone it up so I'm going to work on this for a while I will come back and let y'all see the uh, result before we move on to what's next. What's up? We're back. So I've blended everything in pretty much as good as I think I'm going to get for right now. I might have to come back later and throw some more layers in there to blend it better. But right now I think that's as good as it's going to get. So we're going back to our Violet Shadow. And these areas back in here on the back end that we want it to be dark we're now going to paint them but this time instead of doing it as a glaze we're going to do it as a layer so we don't have any reason to keep what's underneath anymore now we just want nice fresh Solid color. So we're going to be very careful while doing this not to mess with any of the detail that we've set up going in the other direction. I'm just going to go very slow and steady and make sure we hit all of those areas.
that's kind of all there is to it. Just hitting it up like that. And we're going to be adding a little bit of detail to this. Once again, it's, we need to get this completely solid layer of this first. Okay, so I'll be back later with the, showing off that full effect. So you can see our ridges fully painted now, but that color there is too dark against what, uh, what color we have this way. So we need to adjust that. So we're going to take the same <clears throat> violet shadow and we are going to mix it with the deep ocean so that it really matches the colors that we got going on elsewhere. That's still a bit too dark. Let's add more of that deep ocean to it. So now that we got it, we're going to dry brush this onto the detail areas in there. This will brighten those areas up and let them kind of look like they belong to what's going on here with the rest of the model. So there's a little ridges of detail work in the back of these scales I'm picking out. So I'm leaving behind that nice deep dark purple that's almost black. And just getting these raised edges here. with this purpley blue green that may be getting ready to mix some more of
God dang it. There we go. So you kind of see what I'm doing. I'm just going in and I'm hitting all those places. So I'll be back when I've done all that and let you see what we've got. So I ended up having to go back and take the brown blue and dry brush that in there to get a bit darker into the blues. But now we're going to go in and we're going to paint all of these nice little barnacles. And I'm intending to use my bone colors, so my yellow bone, my bone shadow, my polished bone, and my aged bone to do this. I'm going to start off with the bone shadow. I'm just going to go in very carefully with this. And paint it. And it's probably going to take a few layers to build this up because I am painting over so many colors and this is a bit of a thinner paint. But I'm just going to build it up like that. That's still a bit wet in there. So let's just absorb that extra paint up. And now we can continue. And these barnacles are scattered all over the back of the shell. So it's going to take quite a bit of work to hit them all. Okay, so I'll be back showing you the next step. We've based out all of our barnacles. So now we're going to go in with aged bone. And build up the color from there. And we'll use the yellowed bone and polished bone to kind of do our highlighting details after that.
So you can kind of see how that's going. So I'll be back once I get done with this. So I've got the yellowed bone and polished bone here, and you're just going to with them pick out just a little bit of the details in the topmost areas. So that was with the yellow bone. Now we'll go back and do the exact same thing on top of the yellow bone with the polished bone. And for this we're just putting little dots in there. This is just our highest level of highlight where we want it the brightest. And that is the completed top section of the shell. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this off so we can get a better look at this. Let's no, let's zoom out. Some. So yeah, got nice variety of color all across it. And as you can see, we've got the blue in the bottom as well. So that's where we're going to call it for today, YouTube. Uh, like I said, this is going to be a very long process of painting this one up. I'll get this sealed up and then next time we uh, paint we'll be working on our next piece. All stuff that I feel like I could end up using just on him. So we're gonna go ahead and get him disassembled, get the space set up, and figure out what piece we're gonna start working on first. Peace out, YouTube.